The forces of Sita occur under the leadership of its king Mayadunne and his son Tikiribandara besieged the city of Kote in the years 1557 to 1558 but were unable to capture it. They eventually retreated back to their own kingdom once it became clear that the Portuguese were too strong to overcome. They intended to launch another assault the next year but before they could make their move Pereira de la Cerda the Portuguese captain major of Ceylon assembled his own army in March of 1559 to preempt Mayadunne's attack and launch an invasion into Sitaoka itself. However, before he could strike Pereira de la Cerda fell ill with malaria and the Portuguese invasion was delayed until his replacement, Captain Major Jogue de Menzies, could arrive in Ceylon and take over his duties. The timing for the original projected invasion had been ideal for due to the lack of military activity in recent months the Sitaokan monarch had dismissed the majority of his army This however gave the Sitaokans time to learn of this threat and Mayadunne and Tikiribandara quickly reassembled their army which was placed under the command of Tikiribandara Despite the lost opportunity in May of 1559 the Portuguese invasion force commanded by Captain Major Jogue de Menzies, departed Corte and marched directly eastwards towards the heart of Sitaoka. The Portuguese army advanced along the south bank of the Kalane River. They were not aware of Tikiribandara's location, so de Menzies dispatched scouts ahead of the main force, who reported that the Sitaokans were still a few days' march away. Dimensis decided to utilize this time to capture the stockade of Mapitigama on the Sitaoka Corte border on the opposite bank of the Stelnia River. It controlled both the land and water routes into Sitaoka and if it fell into Portuguese hands it would serve as a forward base for Dimensis's army. In mid-May of 1559 the Portuguese army besieged and took a smaller stockade on the south bank of the river killing its 300 strong garrison. Dimensis was preparing to assault the Mapitigama stockade when news arrived that Tikiribandara, learning of the threat to the stockade, was hurrying to intercept the Portuguese. Dimensis decided that it would be an excellent chance to crush the Sitaokans once and for all and destroy all serious resistance to the Portuguese in Corte. He immediately turned his army around and marched it south to meet his foe. The stage was set for one of the most decisive battles in the history of Portuguese Ceylon. between the two greatest sri lankan powers of the age to be fought the two armies met on the plain of hevagama near the paddy fields of mulleriyava on the south bank of the kalini river the battlefield was bordered to the south by dense forest whilst to the north lay the kalini river the sitaokan army was commanded by tikiri bandara and occupied the eastern side of the battlefield The main army was stationed at the fortified pass of Hevagama, the restricted confines of which were better suited for hand-to-hand -hand combat, in which the Sitaokans held the advantage. The army consisted of about 4,000 to 5,000 men and was numerically inferior to the Portuguese force of around 6,000 men, commanded by Captain Jogue de Menzies, which included approximately 4,000 Lascarins or local troops who fought for the Portuguese. They occupied the western side of the battlefield, whose flat open terrain was more suited to their superior numbers and musketry. The battle began on the meadow of Hevagama with a clash between the Portuguese and Sitaoka vanguards. Men shouted above the din of firing guns amidst the chaos of the engagement. The Sitaokans fought fiercely, but the Portuguese with their superior equipment had the upper hand, and the Sitaokans were soon forced to retreat, leaving 200 men dead on the field behind them. The Sitaokan vanguard fell back to the fortified pass of Hevagama, where the main army was stationed. The Portuguese gave pursuit. hoping to force the enemy into a rout but once within the safety of the fortifications the sitaokans turned and fought 
The fighting was intense, and sources claimed that scarcely a yard could be seen through the smoke of firearms. Sea Talcon muskets were of a much lower quality than Portuguese ones, but at close quarters were equally effective. When Tikri Bandara reinforced the fortifications, Captain de Menzies ordered the entire Portuguese army to assault the defensive positions. The Portuguese attacked in successive waves, but were repulsed each time. By sundown, some units withdrew against Menzies' orders, and the captain reluctantly gave the order to disengage. The battered and bruised Portuguese, whose ammunition stocks were severely depleted, retreated to the nearby village of Mulleriava to plan their next move. Night fell. Tikiri Bandara was aware that notwithstanding his victory on that day, his forces were outnumbered and could not defeat the Portuguese in a straightforward battle. During the night, he sent 1,500 of his men to circle the Portuguese position and conceal themselves in the nearby forest. The next morning, both commanders emerged from their command tents and took personal charge of their respective armies. Both armies arrayed for battle next to the paddy fields of Mulleria. Tikiri Bandar organized his remaining 4,000 or so men into the center and two flanks, with the center under his personal command and the wings under two of his generals. Captain de Menzies arrayed the Portuguese and Lascarins in a single line that stretched from one end of the battlefield to the other, planning to overwhelm the Sitaogans through sheer weight of numbers. As soon as his men were formed up, Tikiri Bandar rode out in front of his army and gave the signal to attack. The Sitaogans furiously charged the antagonists who held their ground and responded with musket fire. However, the speed of the Sitaokan advance was such that they were unable to reload before the enemy were upon them. A fierce melee ensued. The Sitaokans held their own against the Portuguese, and the battle swayed back and forth with heavy casualties on both sides. But the Portuguese had a 3 to 2 numerical advantage, and de Menzies committed his entire army in an effort to overwhelm the Sitaokans, keeping back no reserves. This was the moment Tikiri Bandara had been waiting for. A signal was given and Sitaokan war cries filled the air as the outflanking detachment emerged from the cover of the forest and thundered towards the standard and prepared Portuguese, striking the unprotected flanks and rear. Tikiri Bandar had pulled off a tactical masterstroke, taking Dimenzis by complete surprise in a decisive blow. Throughout the battle he had used the terrain to his advantage and now it won him the battle. Unable to withstand the pressure, the Portuguese center and flanks all disintegrated into a chaotic and disorganized mob as the Sitaokans renewed their charge. De Menzies fled the battlefield as his men were dying around him. From there on, the battle descended into a one-sided slaughter with no quarter given by the Sitaokans. The Portuguese army routed, having lost a third of their number. The flower of the Portuguese military in Ceylon lay dead on the field at Mulleria. The survivors were scattered across the countryside, many being hunted down later by the victorious Sitaokans. Exact casualty figures are unknown, but it is estimated that the Sitaokans lost at least 500 men, while the Portuguese lost 1,600, among them a large portion of the Portuguese military leadership. Local folklore reports that the waters of the Mulleria paddy field turned red with the blood of the Portuguese who perished in it. Tikiri Bandara won a decisive victory on that fateful day, one that curbed the power of the Portuguese in Sri Lanka, and whose repercussions would be felt for decades to come. De Menzies fled all the way back to the city of Korte, with the pitiful remains of his once mighty army. Tikiri Bandara, instead of pursuing him, occupied himself with reinforcing and further fortifying the Mapetigama stockade. This course of action proved wise. For three months after the disastrous defeat at the Battle of Mulleriava, the Portuguese launched yet another, though weaker, campaign against Mapetigama. This, however, was easily repulsed, and a large number of Portuguese troops were killed. The losses sustained both in this campaign and at Mulleriava severely weakened the Portuguese hold on the Corte Kingdom. Taking advantage of the state of affairs, Tikiri Bandara invaded Portuguese territory in the year 1565. The Portuguese did not have the troops to defend against an attack of such magnitude and retreated to the city of Corte, which was besieged for many months. The Portuguese managed to hold out despite fierce Sitaokan assaults, and in a few months, Tikiri Bandara lifted the siege. As their numbers had grown too weak to defend the entire city, 
As soon as the Sea Thaukans left, the Portuguese raised the city of Corte to prevent it from falling into Sea Thaukan hands and retreated to the Colombo fort. So after lifting the siege, Tikir Bandar occupied himself with conquering much of the territory originally belonging to Corte that had fallen into Portuguese hands. Finally, only the coastal regions remained to the Portuguese through their naval superiority. In the year 1580, Mayadunne, the king of Sitaoka, passed away, having achieved the crowning glory of his long labor to raise Sitaoka to the most powerful realm in Sri Lanka. His son, the great general Tikir Bandara, the victor of Mullerial, ascended to the throne after his death. He would go on to become one of the most famous and powerful monarchs of the era. And his tale would be remembered to history as that of the mighty sea Tavaka Rajasinghe. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more content on Sri Lankan history. It helps immensely to keep the channel going. And as always, thank you for watching.